a professional mouth painter. Very likely to have to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. I just wanted to walk again. Did they share the probability of that happening? Yes. Zero. No! They said that? To today's episode, we have Aaron here with us today. Welcome, Welcome, Welcome. to the show. Hi, everyone. He's here to share his story with us. But first, let me share a bit about our partners for today's episode, which is Shaping Hearts. And we are very proud to announce that for the next two months or so, the Daily Catch-Up will be showcasing art pieces done by artists such as Aaron. Mm -hmm. In our set, as you can see right here, this is his painting. And we will be sharing more about them at the end of each episode. So today, we thought it'd be good to have Aaron down so that we can learn more about him as well. Yes, yeah. I also want to talk about our partnership with Shaping Hearts. So the entire of the entirety of Gravity Media Group uh, and, and its media assets, right, are going to be supporting this event. This is something that's very, very meaningful to me and the people working on this. Basically, it's an inclusive arts festival mm. where they invite uh, artists with disabilities to exhibit and then help them sell their art. Yes. Which I think it's a fantastic. So 19 October 2024 this year. So I'll see all of you all there. All of us are going to be there. Right. We also have Aaron here to share his story because we are... Today talking about the meaning of art mm. and we, we want to tell school. stories yeah. mm. and so Aaron has very kindly agreed to allow us to ask him a bunch of a bunch of weird questions. Aaron is actually a mouth painter, professional mouth painter, I might say. This is the level of professional we're talking about, <laughs> yes. not your stick man. Nah. So Aaron is currently 45, but back when he was 26, he actually met with quite a bad motorcycle accident that left him paralyzed in his limbs. Yes, all yeah. four limbs. Yeah. Do you think you could share a bit more with, with us about that? Oh, uh, sure. I was in a motorbike accident back in 2006. I actually was riding home somewhere when it's about near my place already. So it started to, to rain. Oh. And then I thought, um, okay, I just try to like hurry up so that I don't get wet. And somehow or other, I think I lost control. Uh, after that, I just, my mind, everything was blank. I could not remember anything. The next thing I know was, um, yeah, I woke up in hospital. Right. Yeah, my mom was beside me crying. Did the doctors tell you that you might be paralyzed for life? They didn't tell me uh, initially, that, but they broke the news to my mom to prepare. Like, they told her that I probably would not recover from the spinal cord injury and probably um, have to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. So who was the one that broke the news to you? It was actually a respiratory therapist because uh, after my um, operation, I had difficulty breathing. Oh. So I had to have a tube like go through my, my into my lungs to help me to breathe. But at which point of the intubation does he bring this up? Not during the intubation. <laughs> uh, at the time during. I was... <laughs> like, hey, by the way, <laughs> nobody asked, but hey, by the way. No, no, it's not that. After a few like uh, weeks, he didn't uh, see any like recovery, muscle recovery. Mm. Mm. So he said the, very likely that um, I will have to be paralyzed for life. What goes through your head though when this information is given to a man? Initially, like there was a lot of denial mm. that this actually was going to happen. Uh, all my friends are riders. All of us have been through like accidents, even like some uh, right. major ones. My friend banged his um, body into a tree and actually his rib punctured his lungs. Oh, and it was quite so. bad. Yeah, it was quite bad. But you know, after a few months, he still managed to recover. Right. And you know, he's back on his feet. So how long did it take for you to be discharged from the hospital? I was in hospital total about six months. Months? Yeah, one month in the ICU, one month in high dependency, and then just one month in the normal ward before um, they had space uh, in the rehab. Actually, what? I mean, after you, you, you've severed your spinal cord, right? Yeah. What is physiotherapy? Like, what do you even do in physiotherapy? Mm, just exercises. That Because I still have my deltoids and my biceps. Right. But my triceps are paralyzed. And I have only uh, wrist extension. So I can move my wrist this way. But if I, you know, flip my hand around, I, I can't move oh, my wrist. Oh, yeah. I see. No, wait. Wow. Oh, I see, I see. Oh. So in terms of what you can do with your limbs like what 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 can you do what can i do like um slow uh right now i can push my own chair okay yeah but not very well it's like maybe on a flat surface I, it's fine okay but once there's a bit of a slope or unevenness then i right. struggle a bit so you you can use your hands it's just that the strength is is not mm. there i can use my arms but uh my hands are my fingers are paralyzed i see so i can't really pick things up 
Like if I drop my phone on the floor, I can't pick it up. Oh. Right. But you just now wheeling or I wanted to wheel you here, like no need. No, it's okay, guys. <laughs> it's, it's, the, the surface here is quite I see, I flat, see. Yeah. Okay. And of course, I was wondering, like, it looked like you could use your hands. So I was wondering, why why paint your mouth when you can use your hands? Yeah, no, I watched a video where you were painting and then after that, you turn around and he like that. Then he take out the paintbrush <laughs> out of his mouth. Then I'm like, eh? <laughs> so, I, so I was quite surprised. Yeah. yeah. I can do only like very specific things. Uh, things that don't require um, very fine uh, dexterity. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so then at which point though, do you feel like you came to accept that this is... This, it, this is going to be live now. Oh, acceptance came in a much later. Like yeah. years later? Or? Many, many years later. Oh no, yeah. must be a very painful few years. Very, 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 very depressing, very painful few years. What was like a very down period? Mm. Like post-accident? Back in the hospital. So everybody is a patient there. It's like, you know, people are recovering. So it didn't really hit me. But uh, reality really hit when uh, after I got discharged. Mm. And I'm no longer in that safe space. So when I'm when I'm you know finally home, all I can see are things that uh, I I could not do anymore. Opening the cupboard to grab my clothes, I can't even dress myself. Mm. Uh, I need help for everything. So mm. so what was like the main concern you had like during that period of time? The main concern mm. is to recover. I just wanted to to walk again. Uh, you know. Did they share like what is the probability of that happening at that point? Yes. Zero. No! They said yeah. that? Yeah. And then uh, even my mom's friend, they she found on a blog about this um, therapy, uh, stem cell therapy in mm. India. Mm. So she even brought me to India. I went to the so-called clinic. There so-called I met, clinic? Uh, how bad was it? So-called yeah. clinic. Um, That's how experimental it was. <laughs> it was, yeah. In the forest one? Uh? No, no, no. It's in, in Delhi. Okay. But it was not even a hospital. It was like a makeshift, uh, the building, and right. then they, they turned it into like a so-called It's hospital. like an office. Uh, la. Yeah, it's like an office. Mm. When we did the stem cell, so-called stem cell therapy, like it was in another hospital. Mm. Yeah, so everything is like very experimental. And yeah, I think it cost a bomb so. How bit? 70K. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a treatment, uh, that once. The, for, for the whole treatment, uh, everything. And at mm. what point did you go like, okay, this is not working out, there's no progress? Yeah, I mean, after a few months, after like all the treatments, I just feel like nothing is happening. Initially, I still like thought uh, where they did this test, you asked me to wiggle my toes. Right. So I was just like trying to, you know. Whatever that feels like. Yeah, yeah. yeah wiggling my toes. And then so the suddenly the toes suddenly move, you know. Mm. Oh. And then say, hey, yeah, that's good. It's a, yeah. Well, it's good. The treatment is, you know. But it's actually a, a, a spasm. Right. Involuntary oh. movement. It's coincidental. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. So what were like some of the things that you had to relearn after getting discharged from the hospital? Everything. Just the simple things that you don't even think about. Like just um, getting out of bed, getting dressed. Actually, how do you get out of bed? Oh, with help, with my uh, right. caregiver's help. Right. Yeah. Are you able to eat on your own? Yes, I, I learned how to feed myself. Okay. Initially, um, had to be fed by somebody, which was very awkward like, if you go out to a restaurant. and <laughs> yeah. then. How long did it take you to be comfortable leaving the house? On your own? On my own, I, I couldn't initially. Because yeah, I needed help with everything. Because mm. even like MRT also, there's a, like a gap. Mm. And I didn't know how to wheelie over. Yes, yeah. Uh, like wheelie. Over, how, uh? o- over time, uh, I learned wheelchair skills. Then I was like, a bit more confident. Which is what? It's go very fast, lah, correct? Uh, go very fast also. But there's a danger that if, you, you, don't, could fall if you don't pop the front wheel, it will hit. Ah. Or it will drop into the gap and then I will just fall down. So it's really a wheelie. You need to pop your front. Like, like you pop? Yeah, pop the front wheel like wheelie. Yeah. That is mad. Wow. How is that an acceptable way for someone on a wheelchair to... <laughs> But you have to like also balance so that you don't fall all the way back. So you like yeah, yeah, like correct, a, correct. Like a little lift. Yeah. So all these are wheelchair skills necessary, lah. Which some as, wow. as some place in Singapore they are teaching people that are about yeah, to yeah, do a wheelchair yeah. how to do a wheelie. That's ridiculous, yeah. That's insane. No, but um, do like the so based on your knowledge, do the different MRT stops have different gaps and you have to kind of just oh potong pasir need to like oh, because <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 there are some MRTs not just a gap but actually a uh, height difference oh. especially city hall MRT especially city, city hall <laughs> MRT yeah, yeah. I like my <laughs> <laughs> did you keep in contact with uh, friends from your previous circles yes uh, but not many it was uh, quite quite difficult for me 
to actually hang out with them. All I think about is like the the life that I have to leave behind, you know? Yeah. Aaron also said that he misses clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Initially, like, you know, at the age at 26, you know, at the, during the weekends, uh, all, always uh, friends would call me up, say, hey, let's go head down to this club, that club, you know? My friends did bring me to a club, but it just felt so weird. The fun is all gone. Mm. So yeah, I didn't really enjoy it. I just felt like a fish out of water. Can I ask you a really intrusive question? Sure. No, I feel like there's an arc of sorts, right? That as, at first, you almost want some form of sympathy because you yourself sympathize yourself. It's like, how mm. can this happen to me? Mm. Right? Then after that, you go through something and then now you hate it when people sympathize you because you don't need their sympathy. I wouldn't say hate lah. Yeah. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, because I, st- I I stopped all this um, self pity self, party, yeah. self pity and self loading really, so I'm over it. What was it you think? Yeah. What, what was, was it that made point? you stop self pitying? There's this like a uh, support group for spinal pa- patients. Right. So the hospital uh, will organize it. So every time, like uh, there's a new patient, the therapist or the the social worker, they will contact the, the older patients, uh, those right. that have discharged already to come and visit. Alumni, new, yeah. yeah, something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, to come and visit those uh, that are just newly injured, you know, to right. hopefully uh, motivate them. So one of the, the patients that actually visited me, uh, sharing with me about um, his his uh, job, uh, that he's a mouth painter and uh, he's been doing it for, at that time, was about 20 over years already. Oh, so, he's the guy. Yeah, uh, wow. his name is Gilbert. Okay, so he was okay. the one that shared with me about mouth painting. And before this, were you into art or any like painting mm-hmm. and all? No, zero. Have lah, cut hair. Is quite, cut hair is an artist art skill lah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hair, kids, the, yeah. Your, your hair is my canvas. Oh! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's still selling for his ex boss. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you go from Gilbert sharing with you about his profession to you yourself picking it up? Um, So, a few years really after I was discharged, when uh, me and another friend, because uh, we were thinking of uh, employment or so, mm. so we went over to his place and then uh, he just shared with us about how he he does it. Even show us like how he paints and all that. And uh, he just like guided us how 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 to get started. So what um, his advice was to just go to the library and uh, borrow books on so, mouth painting oh, or uh-huh. painting? No, not not pain, not mouth painting. Just uh, like general painting. Painting la. in general. Uh, uh, okay. So I uh, just followed the tutorials. You learn how to paint from a book, ah. Yeah, back at that time there was no internet. But so. you do you have to translate. Yeah. So whatever with hand, you just try with your mouth. Yes, yes. <laughs> just so what did you draw? The first thing. First thing I did was um, I can't even draw a square. I, I think like a flower. Like, uh, <laughs> I painted an orange. Just something huh? simple. Oh. Yeah. Orange. Simple, simple. Yeah. This guy. You got a picture of your your first orange? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, oh. okay, 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 okay. Yeah, send us, send yeah, us. Yeah, we love to see. And then compare it to a recent orange that you painted. You think this is painting number what? Uh, like five thousand each already? No, a few hundred already lah. Hundreds, yeah, uh, hundreds hundred. to get here. Uh. Means we got hope also. Do you have a favorite painting then that you've done? My favorite painting is probably um, a portrait of our former uh, prime minister, Mr. Lee oh. Sien Long. Oh, okay. yes. Mr. Lee Sien Long. I did a portrait of him, and actually, I I sent it to him. I went all the way to Istana to deliver the wow. painting. Wow! Oh. Yeah, wrote him a, a very nice letter to thank him for. You know, making Singapore such an inclusive and um, oh and, wow. yeah, was this recent? And, no, oh many, that was even before back. he retired ah. Yeah, many many years back. Oh, oh that's he was still he was still. No he had like a second win. Suddenly very motivated because of you. <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I wrote him a very nice letter to thank him for making Singapore such a uh, you know inclusive and accessible country, and yeah, and then he wrote me back a very nice wow. letter as well. Yeah. Mm. So that was like quite one of my greatest moments. Wow. Wow. That is a sick flex though. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> painting the painting, it's such a sick flex. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you make an income now? Uh, by mouth painting. So um, back when uh, I met Gilbert, uh, who introduced me, so he was already painting for the Association of Mouth and Foot Painting Artists. Oh. The MFPA for short. I buy the, the, the yeah, greeting yeah, cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. the greeting cards and uh, souvenirs. So after completing all the tutorials, I submitted uh, my artwork to them to be accepted. Uh, the to, first one? Um, we <laughs> need to send, I think, three okay. right. artwork and then they were great. And then 
Yeah, I have to send did, in did the, the orange record. Did the, the orange, orange yeah, yeah, the orange. You submitted the first the thing first you painted. You were that good, man. Huh? So he do three painting that he started. The <laughs> first painting you paint with your mouth was an orange. That's the one you submitted. Is that yeah, good? One wow. off, one off, one off. Wow. wow. I think I submitted five initially. Eventually, I got uh, selected to be a, a student member. Right. Yes. And then, so they, they support um, artists like me. They give us an allowance. Okay. Oh, to, okay. To, to buy like materials, to, to take um, art lessons. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, until now, you're still getting it? Yes, account? yes. Okay. I so, see. But then, and then when you sell the paintings, then that's additional. Yeah, like, additional for okay. Or if they select our paintings to be on the souvenirs and greeting cards, they give us uh, extra like bonus royalties, as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you all like to support uh, Mr. Aaron here, where can we but directly but shipping cards first uh, first stop yeah, yeah. first stop but if they would like to directly shop your paintings where would, where would they go oh shop my paintings is um shipping hearts wow this guy tells you <laughs> so not okay okay you know, you know. so the shipping hearts e-commerce site is in the works yeah so last time right last year you could only buy at the shipping hearts pop-up at the festival itself yeah. mm-hmm. um, but in a few months time you will be able to buy it 24-7. All through the year. Yeah. So yeah. we all help provide a better income for all the uh, artists with disabilities. Yeah. Actually, okay, I got a lot of painting questions. Uh. How long does a painting like this take? I estimate four months. No, no, no. One month. Uh, this this size, um, maybe about two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks? Mm, okay. No way. Okay, okay. What's the biggest <laughs> painting you have done? Um, But the biggest painting that I can do is about 18 inch. I have no context. As compared to as compared to this one? Uh, much much bigger. <laughs> much much bigger. bigger. Um because um I, I can't stand up, so there's a certain height limit right. for me to paint. Anything more I would have to paint it upside down already. <laughs> how how do you which dec- is quite quite tedious, quite difficult. <laughs> how do you decide what to <laughs> wait, wait, do? Wait, so you wait, hold up. Only the upside down part. It's just quite tedious, huh? <laughs> oh, so you you do paint upside down? Have to like if I sometimes oh. if the canvas is too big. So you literally paint like this half and then the top half you have to like flip the whole thing. Yeah, and yeah. Imagine the- Like a, tri- no, the, like a 3D the printer. No, the flamingo, the reflection, he also do upside down. No, fair enough. <laughs> no, this, this, this. <laughs> no, they all fair enough. That's a good one. Do you all bite the brush or you bite something else? No, uh, actually we have an attachment at the back of the brush. So it depends on different artists have their own methods. But for me, I use like- um maybe silicone rubber tubing. Sometimes oh. I, if the brush is too short, I actually buy um, uh, from Art Friend this brass tubing. So I attach the, um, the, 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 the back of the brush to the tubing, then maybe I cut to the correct length that I want. So I, I bite onto the, the brass tubing. Why don't you buy a longer brush? They, they don't have the it. specific just, one uh, that he's looking brush, for. Uh, yeah. okay, because eight. for finer details, the brush are usually smaller. Okay. Yeah, and shorter. So they have longer brushes. Right. I yeah. see. So Aaron has also recently just won the Northeast Hearts Award, which essentially gives him a five thousand dollar grant to further his mouth painting. Hey, your trophy cabinet like full. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Something interesting that I got from him is that he plans to use the grant to hire a master artist. Who is that? Gilbert. <laughs> 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 I'm still searching. What, yeah, who is a master artist? Yeah. What are you like? What are you looking for? Something, somebody who paints differently from me, so that I can learn um, the art style. So yeah. What do you mean by style. paint differently? Because I, I I mostly paint like realism. Yeah, oh. it was only after um, I went to Nafa that my uh, my teacher because I used to be very OCD. Like everything must be in the lines or everything, the line must be straight. Right. But actually he taught me there's uh, beauty in imperfection as well. Right. right. Yeah. So that's where I, I learned a lot. So I feel that uh, maybe I want to uh, engage somebody who is like, um, how you say, more uh, impressionist or more maybe abstract Mm. Yeah, so I can learn something new. Right. Yeah, so like different genres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Good, interesting. Right? Yes, okay, correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, but is that a common practice? Like maybe not just a, like amongst mouth painters, but even painters in general to like hire a master artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there are people around in Singapore calling themselves master, master artists. Uh. They must drink with yeah, like, their professional. Arts, uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, like what do you of, do for a living? I'm a master artist. Like, like one of my friends, he actually uh, hired this... Uh, uh, artist, he, the, which mm. is, he also has a disability, but it's a Tourette syndrome, mm. and he's a, a previous winner of uh, the UOB. Uh, oh, Art, artist of the year! Uh, artist of the year! Of the year. Wow. Of the year yeah. Award. yeah, my friend actually uh, hired him, and then um, yeah, they had a, f- a few lessons uh, over a few months. Right. Uh, yeah. 
So how did you win the North East Hearts Award? I just uh, submitted my works to them. They were calling for um, entries. People, yeah, entries. And so I submitted my artwork. Orange, yeah. No, la. no. not orange really this time. Where's the orange now? Uh, so already. I have no idea. It was, I, I didn't sell it because it was painted on paper. Oh. Yeah. So it was just like, uh, just to test and then I submit. Oh, you know what I should do for the next painting? You should draw orange. Yeah, okay. like come full circle. Which hey, an orange hey, also. Yeah. All right. <laughs> wow. No, that's crazy. Imagine you get to buy like Da Vinci's like first ever exactly. piece of yeah. drawing. It's yeah. insane. Wow, that'll be worth a lot. Yeah. So aside from the mouth painting, do you explore other things? Um, mostly sports, exercise, because I just wanted to get as much recovery as possible. So after I was discharged, I actually tried hand cycling. So oh, it's like a- um, yes. This guy. It's a, <laughs> like a bicycle, but you use your hands to paddle. Actually lie down. But got more wheels or not? Uh, three wheels. Okay. Mm. Oh, so you actually you lie down on the bike and then you, you paddle with your arms. Oh, 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 I've seen that, I've seen that, I've seen that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, actually tried swimming also. Swimming after- What <laughs> you do are the most oh, difficult things? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, because Why the, you don't go play table tennis? <laughs> For oh, example, he got played table tennis. Oh, he also played that. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> that was probably before swimming and between archery. <laughs> that was after like, 2015. Yeah, did yeah, you compete? Way. Sorry, yeah. 2015, um, Singapore um, hosted the um, ASEAN Para Games. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> no year. So, so they were looking. Paralympian? For, they were looking. No, not no. Paralympian. Oh, sea Games. Sea Games, Sea Games, yeah. Close, close. So they were looking for like players to compete. Yeah, you don't have to really win anything. Yeah, I just participate. So they they were just want, the wanted the, of the spot. Yeah, like, win. Yeah, hey! you, you win what? You won't go on the gold medal. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the first year you tried. Yeah. Oh, what have you done? It was, it was, it was, it was like, 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 like too easy. Yeah. <laughs> it was a team event, so yeah. Still, yeah, my team was very good. Irritating, the thing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so so have you thought of like doing the the Paralympics? Like no, no, the, uh, I'm only up to C games level. I'm not that good. Okay. No, you know it's done. Eh? You never even try, right? You just be like, I'm gonna take my gold no, medal. I, no, I, I did. I, I actually split in the the national team for uh, for for few years. Wow. Oh, and we went. Uh, it was a really fun time because of that. I I get managed to travel to a lot of countries. Mm. Right. Yeah, I went to Belgium to compete. Uh, Slovenia, Taiwan, wow. Korea. Yeah. yeah. Super fun. Then I got to meet like other quadriplegics as well. Yeah. Yeah, from all over the world and then just make friends. Do you have like a bucket list, like something you want to- Navy SEAL. <laughs> from him. He already do before. <laughs> um, probably the top of my bucket list is to try skydiving. Yeah, I've seen in videos before where quadriplegics even, yeah, so they will be strapped, uh, they call it tandem mm. to the instructor mm. and then they just jump off the plane together. So we will try and make it happen. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but this is part of another thing. So in a few months time, okay, we will drop. I try my best. I try my best. No promises. I try my best. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it takes on the other end. You know, uh, like to also find an instructor who's that willing. would tend them. But I think if if there are already people that are doing it, is it not different? Because like mostly, if you do also, won't you tend them? Confirm lah. As yeah. in, you have to lah. Yeah la. So if people are already doing tandem, then what's the difference? The instructor's liability ma. Mm, I do have a friend that did um, skydiving before, but he's a paraplegic. So his uh, upper body is still normal. So when they were landing, the instructor told him to hold his legs. Oh, so raise your, oh. I see, I yeah, see, I so, see. But I see. for me, I don't think I can do that. Right. Uh, the upper body strength to do that. Okay, I see. okay. Fair point. Can settle, yeah. can settle. What's the, what's the most adventurous thing you've done since? After my accident? Yeah. I actually rode a motorbike after my accident, which was quite scary and stupid now I think of it. It was mm. in, in Vietnam. So I was uh, staying at a friend's place and they wanted to bring me to this temple where they, they the, the, the nuns did like um, uh, so-called uh, like uh, like those ritual. TCM oh, kind oh, of oh. thing, mm. more like traditional I see. medicines. But it was very like very deep in the... The 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 the, the back roads right, yeah. Right. So they, they there's no way for me to go there in a wheelchair and the 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 the, the roads were too narrow for a car. So oh. I had to go there via motorbike. So Got PTSD you knowing. Well a, a bit like scary like, because they carried me to the back as a pillion rider. Then another guy had to be behind me. So in case I fall off, yeah, but then my, my legs were like, I couldn't move my legs. Man. So mm. the legs were like dangling there. Right. I was thinking, 
my god if I you know fall down I think probably I'll be amputee or so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that right. was really crazy your mother know or not this happened no, no. <laughs> <laughs> your mother don't know huh? your mother don't know, I know, I know. Uh, hello auntie yeah, I think our demographic very white one Okay, so we've come to the end of today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, a big thank you to Aaron for yes. joining us and letting thank us you. ask him all sorts of questions. Of course, so sick, his life. so sick. Yes, and we're excited to be showing you guys more artwork across the next two months or so. Yes. And you can also be seeing these pieces of art in person on the 19th of October. You can buy also. Yes, and you can buy. So the whole point is to buy. Please buy. <laughs> Please. Mm. For more details, you can check out Northeast CDC on Instagram and as well as follow Shaping Hearts or check out the links down below. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode bye bye do like moth painters collab like the three of y'all work on one painting together no very difficult then everybody best start banging heads you can take turns <laughs> the, the wheelchair prevents us from going too near each other do you can take turns <laughs> 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 <laughs>